All right, guys, so welcome back to another video, and today I've got something a little bit different. So it's going to be a Fusion 360 video, but this isn't so much a tutorial. It's more of a, a chance for you to kind of hang with me and just see how I design something. So as you, if you've been following my channel, you know that I've been working on an RC car project. And I've done the version 1, and as part of the version 2, I've upgraded all my parts, and I've put them on order, and they should be here in around 3 weeks. So basically, I've got 3 weeks now where there's not a lot I can do. So what I thought I'd do is get a bit ahead of myself and try and design some of the parts here in Fusion 360. So I don't have the physical parts, but today I'm going to try and design the wheels that I've ordered. So I've ordered new wheels. And all I've got to reference are the images from the seller's website. And, you know, I'm probably going to have to adjust it when the wheels actually arrive. I can measure everything myself, change those things, and then they'll be ready to go. But they don't have to be perfect, as long as the sort of uh, diameter of the wheels right and the width of the tyre. That's all you really want. And I want to be able to create my version 2 car as a full CAD model. And in order to do that, I have to model the real parts in CAD itself. So this is probably going to end up being quite a long video but I thought it'd be useful because a lot of you have said that you find my Fusion videos really helpful and I just thought you know I'd be doing this stuff anyway so why not share it. As I said it's probably going to be maybe an hour video or something like that but let's just see how it goes. So these are the wheels we're going to be modeling and you can see they're quite a complicated sort of design. You've got the tread we're going to do all that stuff and uh, the alloy itself. We don't have a lot of images to reference um, but I have saved these out, so if I minimize this and we look at my image here, you can see we've got one here with a couple of dimensions that we can use. Now, we can't really trust these per se, but um, as I said, I can tweak it later on when they actually are delivered and I can measure things myself. So these are the images we've got. We've got a sort of front view, uh, an angled view, side on, a rear view, and I pulled these from someone's review just so I can have an aid in designing the tread pattern which will be quite difficult so this will be quite all these images will be quite useful in designing what we need to do so I'm going to kind of take you through it and you know it's not going to be a perfect video I'm probably going to make a lot of mistakes um, but that's how it goes in the real world so first thing I'm going to do then is insert a canvas so I'm going to do that and I'll select the image from my computer. I'm just going to select the front view and add that in. I'm going to add it to the front plane. And one of the things we can do is center that up. So we want to look at center on. You just want to try and center as best you can. Um, it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, but just enough to sort of add it there. Put that in. There we go. That looks alright to me. So, if we go back to our images, we know that the di diameter of this entire wheel is 125 mil, according to this. Whether we trust that, we we'll see. But um, it's 125 mil. So what we can do is calibrate this image to be that dimension, so it can aid us in designing a model. So I'm going to go up to canvases here and just right click calibrate. I know it's, you know, it's asking us to place a point. So I'm going to place a point at the highest sort of visual point I can see. And then I place a second point at the bottom at the lowest point. I know this is, not it's going to be really hard to get it perfect because you've got perspective and things in play here as well. Uh, so, you know, you've just got to kind of estimate it. So I'm going to go and make that with a 120 or 125. Let's have a look. It's 125. So um, we're going to make that 125. And there we go. You can see it scaled it up. So if we zoom out, we can now trust that Fusion has made the distance between those two points 120 mil. And that's really going to help us out in designing this. So I'm going to start designing the actual alloy itself. So in order to do that, I'm going to create a new component. I'm going to call this alloy and I'm going to create a new sketch. And to do this, I'm going to sketch um, side on because we're going to use revolve to create the alloy. And 
it's it's funny because you don't kind of design this in the way you would intuitively think you would just by looking at a wheel you can really use that revolve tool and it makes life so much easier so uh, we're going to go in here and let's go back to our images we can see here we've got a um, diameter of the alloy which is 70 mil and that's to the inside um, the seam there so we can create a parameter for that so I'm going to go up to you parameters I'm going to create one called um, alloy diameter I'm going to make this 70 mil and we can use this now here so we're going to create a line and we're going to use a construction line to guide um, our distance for now I'm just going to place the line uh, I'm going to make it construction so we can right click construction line and uh, make the distance between these two points alloy diameter divided by 2 now remember we're divided by 2 because we're going to revolve and we're dealing with half the diameter which is the radius right so now that we've got that we know that we're somewhat following that alloy di diameter now. Um, but what we might want to do is if again we look at the images, we want to include that outer thickness there. Now we, we don't have a measurement for it. So I'm going to go and say um, that it's probably around 5 mil. And I'm going to make it so that we can adjust this later on, you know, based on the image. But there's a way we can do it as well using the image so I'm going to go and say that's 5 mil so uh, I'm going to create another parameter I'm just going to call this um, alloy thickness the naming my naming conventions are not the best as long as I understand what they mean uh, that's all that matters so I'm going to go with that um, and then obviously we want to add that to this so if we add I'm going to put these in brackets nicely and add on the um, alloy thickness just like that now we now need to um, create the profile for this alloy wheel so I'm going to go ahead and create a rectangle here just for now. Uh, we can change this later on. So um, if we go back to the images again as a reference, we can see that the width of the tire, the width of the whole wheel is 65 mil. But you can see if we look at the images, the tire itself actually sticks out further than the, the rim, right? Once you inflate it, that's what would happen. So again, we're going to have to approximate a little bit here and kind of estimate the, the width of the wheel rim itself. So I'm going to create more parameters. So I'm going to do um, alloy width. I'm going to go and say, let's have a look where it was. So the tire width was 65. So I'm going to say, We've got five mil each side for the tire, so that would leave us with um, 55. So I'm going to say it's 55. And while we're here, let's create tire width, and we know that that is 65. So let's hit OK. So now we can use these here. So I want the width of this to be our parameter, which was alloy width. So we know that's always going to be correct. Um, and remember, we want this to be our other parameter, which was alloy thickness. So I want to create something that looks a bit more like an alloy. So I'm going to do a simple sort of shape. Um, we could probably do something like this. Maybe have... Let's, let's draw a line first just to give us a better reference. So I want a center line that is going to be a bit of a guide. So I'm just going to draw that. And again, we want this to be a construction line. Uh, we can make it, um, let's go for diameter 
we need a measurement to make sure it's halfway. So we're going to say, oh, no, we're not going to do that. We're going to make between these lines. And we're going to say ally width divided by 2. That way it'll always stay in the center. Um, so now we can use that as a bit of a reference point. So let's continue with our line. I want something that's sort of a bit like this. Oh, that's not right. We want it to be there. And uh, if we trim this, we can add in some dimensions here to see where we want these points to be. So I'm going to make that 5 mil from there. And I'm going to make that and that. That's going to be 2 mil. Make it nice and even. And uh, this distance, we're going to leave it as it is. Um, so we do the same here. We want this to have a set length. And uh, we're going to do the same for this. Uh, and of course, it's going to, we're over constraining. So we're going to set the height for that one. And there we go. We've got a bunch of measurements. It's not complaining. It's happy. So now we also need to mirror this onto the other side. So I'm going to go and create a mirror. I've already got our mirror line. So we select our objects, which are these. I'm going to mirror that over to the other side. And there we go. So that's the sort of shape of our wheel or our alloy done. So I'm going to hit finish. And we're obviously going to come back to this later on because we'll need to create the tire profile as well. So let's hit finish. And for now, I'm going to rename the sketch. I'm just going to call it um, wheel profile. And there we go. So now what I'm going to do is revolve. So I'm going to go up to revolve, select the part that I want to use, which is this. Uh, it's going to ask, ask us to um, select an axis. And I'm going to use the Z because we're going to rotate around. And you can see that's where it's done. So I'm going to create a new body, hit OK. You can see that's what we've ended up with. Now. We can use our canvas here. So if we go to the canvas, edit canvas, I'm going to increase the opacity of it so we can see it a bit better. Let's make it around 75-ish. Hit OK. Now if we activate our main component, we can see, we can kind of see how we're looking here in terms of dimension. So I'm going to go up to the canvas, probably reduce it. It's probably gone up too much. Um, I'm just kind of have a look so I can hide the component and it kind of looks like it's maybe a bit bigger than it needs to be let's have a look you can see that it's gone a lot higher so we may need to move um, the canvas up a little bit and again this is where that perspective really comes in um, and it can, it can cause issues. And it looks like the reason that's happened is because this didn't seem to center properly. Let's recenter it. I thought I did this, but I may have control z edited it. So, okay, let's hide the origin again. Now let's show and hide. That's starting to look a little better. It's still not perfect. But what we can do, of course, because I created that parameter, I can change that um, alloy thickness. That might be why. So if I make that 3 mil, see how our design changed there. So it's looking like that's a bit too little. So we're going to go for 4. <clears throat> Maybe a bit too much. So I'm going to say 3.5 might be the sweet spot. I'm going to hit OK. That looks like maybe... I think we need to do a, another adjustment. Probably need to come down a, a little bit. 
to show the origin. If we come down a bit, hit OK. And again, it's never going to be perfect with the perspective. So you just have to make make do with what you've got, basically. And I will have to update this when I get the actual part through. As you can see now, we've got a little seam around the edge. Um, so I'm going to make it... <clears throat> I think I'll go for 4 mil to be safe. So let's make this 4. Okay. There we go. I'm, I'm happy to go with that. So we've got four mil. So now if we hide the canvas, that's that's what we're left with at this point. So next thing I'm gonna focus on here is the actual front part of the alloy. And um, you may have seen my other video on how to design an alloy wheel. And this is gonna be in a similar process. So what we do is we use revolve again, but we need to create a profile for the shape of it. So if we look at the wheel, find a nicer image like this one. You can see if we look at this, the alloy kind of curves in towards the center. And that's essentially what we want to do. Um, and looking at that, it's quite a complicated shape. And to try and design that would be difficult, you'd think. By using Revolve, you can it can really make your life so much easier. So I'm going to create a sketch. And remember, we're using alloy, so we're going to activate that. I'm going to create a sketch here on the... Um, side on right plane and remember we want this to begin at a certain point here so we know that this is our alloy thickness so I'm just going to place a, a line here to give us some dimension so we want this to begin um, let's draw a construction line Hit X. We're just going to draw a line there. Um, and we want this to begin. Oops. Let's go to the front view. We want that to be high the body. So we're going to reference our center point. And we know that this is uh, alloy diameter divided by two that way so if we finish the sketch now we could probably get rid of the line oh no could could have made that a point rather than a line but it doesn't matter so you're going to finish and you can see now when we start designing the inside part um, it's going to begin in the right place and you'll see what i mean later on so i'm going to go to this i'm going to create uh, i'm just going to call it alloy shape so we're going to go back into that sketch and we obviously want it to begin as well a certain distance from the front and we're going to make that a parameter too so i'm going to go to change parameters add one i'm going to call it alloy offset i'm going to make that five mil for now we can change it later on so we're going to make it five and again this is where we use our parametric modeling. So I want to create a shape. I'm going to go up to arc. I'm going to go for three point arc. And somewhere here, I want to create uh, a point. And I need to specify another point. Now, this is going to be difficult because I don't know the measurement if I show you. So obviously there's a there's a, some kind of diameter there for that. Now I know the back, so if I zoom out, I'm pretty confident that that's a 12 mil, um, a couple, a 12 mil hex nut, but I don't know the exact diameter of the other part. So I'm gonna have to change that when the, the wheels arrive. But I can approximate it just by eye and change it later on. So I'm gonna do an arc. So we go to arc, three point arc. I'm just going to start there, which we'll add our, off, our offset in a bit. But I probably want to do something, something around there, maybe. This is going to have to be a parameter later on as well. Um, obviously, because there's a depth as well. So if, if we go back to this, 
you know, that hex nut there is has a, a certain depth backwards from the rear of the wheel. Uh, we could do that quite easily if we wanted to using just another extrusion to, to correct it. But yeah, we want to do we want to keep it consistent. So I'm going to create another point and have that kind of be um, an offset like that. I'm going to join these up using a line. So just join them up. Same here. And I'm going to extend these back a bit just for now so that we've got some kind of straight part to it. Hopefully they are straight. So we hide the body. Yes, so you can see they're straight. We want to join it up. Uh, show the body again. Uh, we want to add in that dimension we created um, from. So we want to go from the front of the alloy to this point. And this is going to be alloy offset. You can see what that's done now. It's adjusted the position. And you can see what that's going to do. So as I adjust that parameter, the position of that can come forwards or backwards. And it just makes changing it so much easier. So we're going to... We're not going to finish sketch, actually. We've got a couple more things to do. So we need to add some dimensions to these as well, which will define the thickness of the alloy or the rim pieces. Uh, I'm going to stick with 4 mil for now. Um, so I'm going to go to parameter. I'm going to create a parameter called spoke um, thickness. And again, the naming convention is probably not the best, but it doesn't matter. So we're going to make this spoke thickness and the same up here as well. Make this spoke thickness. You can see that actually changed it a little bit, but that's okay. I've added the wrong... Right, okay, we made a mistake there. So let's control Z, come back, and again... So you can see I added that between those two points, which is wrong. What I should have done, um, if we go back in here, I should have added it between this point and this point. And I may have done that, I don't know. Um, let's make it uh, spoke. Oh, I need to I need to recreate it. So let's go back here. We'll make it spoke thickness four mil there we go there's that one so i think i did do it right actually uh, but sometimes when you pull your diameter measurement out it can hide the actual true points so i'm going to make that spoke thickness <clears throat> and there we go i'm happy with that so we're also going to have to define the radius here. I want to keep this consistent. So I'm just going to keep that default. And also this radius as well. So I'm going to keep that default. Now one other thing we need to do is define the height of these points. Which is going to be the same as our um, alloy diameter divided by 2. So that's that one. And we also need to tell it how far these points are from the, the center. So I'm just going to leave that as they are as well. Like that one. And also that one. And the other thing we want to do is define the height here of, of these radiuses. So I'm going to go from this one and make that there. That's going to be consistent. So we're going to keep that as that. We don't need to create a parameter. And the only other one we need to fix, you can see it's giving us those blue lines there, is um, the point of those from the center. So I'm just going to make that consistent as well. And there we go. So we've got no blue lines, Fusion's happy. Uh, we can finish this for this part. So we're going to finish sketch. And show the body again here. And uh, you can see... That's pretty much what we want. And what we're going to do now is revolve again. So make sure we're on our alloy. 
we're going to revolve, select the profile that we want. And I'm going to go and select our axis again. So we want the Z. And there we go. You can see it's kind of created that weird looking shape, right? Um, it looks weird for the moment, but you'll see why this is awesome later on. So I'm not going to join it for now. I'm going to make it a new body just to keep it separate. I'm going to hit OK. So we go into our bodies here. I'm going to rename this to um, Outer Alloy. And I'll rename this one to Front Alloy. And you can see now, if I go to Change Parameters, and I adjust that offset variable we created, say I want to make it 10, hit Enter. You can see it moved back there. So you can see how using these parameters makes your life so much easier. Um, I'm going to make this 5 again, like that, and that's what we want. So I'm just going to hit OK. And um, that's that part done. The next part we're going to focus on is the front of the alloy and that pattern. So we've got a nice image that we added in. Remember the canvas. So we can use that now to create that shape. And you can probably see what we're going to do is we're going to cut back into that shape we created and it, it creates what looks like a complicated um, shape, a complicated model, but it's really, it's simple, it's really not that difficult. So I'm happy with the shape, um, it's, it's, it's as centered as I'm going to get it for now and I'm going to hide, um, no we're going to keep that, so let's hide the body a second. Um, we want to add, let's hide the canvas, sorry. We want to add in an offset plane. So I want to activate my alloy. I'm going to construct an offset plane at the front angle. So I want to pull this out anywhere in front of the alloy, as long as it's not intersecting. You just want it in front. And I'm going to hit OK. And what I can now do is create a new sketch on that offset plane. So you can see we're sketching on outwards from the alloy. So I'm going to go to front and now if I show the canvas again you can see we've got something to aid us here in our design and this is perfect. This is exactly what these canvases are for. So this this part here is going to be really difficult when it comes to um, adding in um, dimensions and doing that parametric modeling just because it's a complex geometry with these curves. So typically at this point, what I like to do is make sure that I'm happy with the size of the, the wheel rim and the shape of it. Because if you make it any bigger after this point, a lot of these sketch objects are gonna change. So before you go and do something complicated like this, make sure you're happy with that shape on the outside. And I, I am, it lines up very well. And we can see that by switching the canvas on and off. It really does line up nicely. So all we have to do is sketch out one of these. And you'd think, you know, you a lot of people would go and do all of them. So they'd go and do a line around all of them. You don't want to do that. There's a tool we can use called Circular Pattern, which saves us so much time. So if I go up to line, I just basically want to sketch out something nice. And obviously the first thing we need to do is have um, an outer reference to this. So we're going to make this alloy diameter, which we know is 70 mil. And now we can just sketch out this nicely. It's like tracing. So um, you just want a rough sort of outline of it. You probably make that one a bit better, to be fair. Let's go to there. And you want to intersect with the outer circle and that lets us select them then to, to cut. So um, we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to select these. And now we can use the spline tool. So I'm going to go up to spline, fit point spline. And you can essentially sketch this out. Now the spline tool is quite difficult to use. You, you kind of need to create a new point every time you get a direction change. But it can be difficult to get them really smooth. If you make a mistake, you can just control Z and go back. I usually always make mistakes using these. Uh, they are, as I said, it's not the easiest thing to use. 
Um, so you, you just roughly want to get the shape of it. I'm going for this. You can see that's not really working there. So I'm going to go back, maybe start a bit earlier, create another point, and then do another one. And another one. And hit the tick. There we go, we've got that one. But notice as well here we've got another part that we, we need to sketch out. And you can see that perspective again there playing with us. So you can see we want to follow the outside part, not the inside part. So again, we want to intersect that with one of these points up here. And I'm going to go maybe for something like this. And just follow that outside line. We want that one. That one again, that one. That one's not really worked. So let's, let's, let's go here, here. There we go, that's what we want. We want to sketch that up. Just join it all the way up the top. And there we go, you can see we've got that. Um, and I want to create a circle. So we want to roughly center this by I. You can see that's not that centered, so I'm going to go back to it again. Let's try that. There we go, that'll do. So I'm gonna go for that one. And again, if you really wanted to, you could add a parameter for these. Um, you can add in dimensions where, where you think it'll work, but you can see now what I was on about where, you know, if we change the, um, the radius here, or the diameter of the wheel, all this stuff's gonna be off. So you wanna make sure you're comfortable with your, your your sizes first so i'm going to go to line and uh, the only other thing we need to do now oh you can see that's not good there that one's horrible so i'm going to go and change that um i don't know why it did that to be honest it's not nice at all so let's go into our sketch three i'm going to grab the spline tool again I don't know what happened there. So you may have to do the whole thing again, which is quite annoying. Um, okay. So let's grab the spline tool. Fit point spline. Probably went from the wrong point. Um, so you, you want to keep it nice and smooth. And the spline kind of does smooth the curves for you. It doesn't always work too well. Um, let's try that one, that one, and then join it up. And I'm gonna tick that. Let's have a look at that. All right, so that's a lot better. You can see that's a better line. Still not absolutely perfect there. So I might wanna move it up, maybe. Something like that. Maybe move it outwards. There we go. Check this one. That looks okay. Right, so the only other one we need to do is this line. So you can see this one starts around here. And then we just want to um, intersect it with the outside, like that. Same here. Intersect this one. Round about there. Just join these up. And I'm gonna fill it these as well. So I'm gonna to go to fill it. Just curve them off nicely. Till they're roughly rounded. Round about there. Okay, I'm gonna hit enter. And again, that one, I'm gonna move some of these. Let's move that. Just so we've got a better curve. That looks a little better. Probably should have put that one around there. There we go. Okay, so now what we can do, as I said before, we can use the circular pattern tool to duplicate this in a circular fashion, right? So to do that, it's really simple. You just go up to create circular pattern. You need to select your objects. So I want this one, this one, uh, all of these, the circle, and these two. And I'm just going to go to the center point, select our center point. And you can see that it's added two of them. 
So I don't know how many this is going to add, but they should line up because if the geometry works out, it'll look right. So I'm just going to increase them. And there we go. So it's seven. We've got seven different holes around the edge. You can see it basically lines up quite nicely when we, um, we do that. So I'm going to hit OK. That creates that for us. And I'm going to go ahead and finish the sketch. And now we're in a position to actually make this cut. So I'm going to hide the canvas. And what we're going to do is cut away into that weird sort of shape we created. So I'm going to go up to extrude. I'm going to go ahead and select all of these. And uh, we want the holes as well. And we're selecting what we want to cut away from the object, remember. So we don't want to cut any of this stuff yet. Oh, and you can see we've actually missed something there. So let's go back. And this is what I was talking about before, you know, how these designs never go perfect. So what I did when I created the circular pattern, so let's create the pattern. I didn't select those two bottom um, radiuses there. So we want that and that, which we missed. So we want that, that, and that, and these two at the top. So again, super easy, right? We, we select the center point. I believe it was seven that we needed. There we go. Hit OK. And that's that finished sketch. So now again, we're just going to go around, select the points that we want to cut out. And that's going to be these and the little holes as well. And I'm going to make that cut. So hide the canvas. And what I want to do is on the extrude menu here, I'm going to go and start from object. The object I'm going to start from is that weird shape. And then I'm going to come around to the back. And we want to extend that to the other object, which is the back of that weird shape. And if we click, you can see it cuts just between those points. And you always want to do that, and it's good practice to do that, because a lot of people will just cut, and they'll drag the arrow all the way back through. And what happens is then, if you start adding stuff behind, you will have a, a clash between... Um, the geometries and he won't like it so always make sure you do this so I'm going to hit OK and that cuts that out for us and depending on your machine you know it might take a while to, to, to do those calculations because you know that's starting to look pretty cool right and there's one thing missing here which we have to do now so I'm going to quickly rename the sketch I'm going to call it alloy pattern I right, hit enter and all we need to do now is add in the other extrusions. So you can see we've got these lines we created. So we're going to extrude and select all of those. Just like this. And now this is another uh, important thing to learn. So what we can do is, again, use that start from object, which is essential in creating those cool curves, right? So we're going to extrude from this object. And then we're going to pull it outwards and watch what happens so i pull it outwards you can see the extrusions following that curve and that's awesome that's exactly what we want um, if you don't start from the surface what you can end up with is these horrible straight lines and you don't want that so again this can be a parameter if we wanted it to be and i'm gonna i'm gonna actually do that so i'm gonna hit okay for now I'm going to go up and create a parameter here. I'm just going to call it um, front lines depth or height. We're going to go for height. I'm going to make it 2 mil. Hit OK. I'm going to go back into this extrusion. I'm going to change that value to our parameter. So we're going to be front lines height, join. Okay. Notice now if we hide the sketch, again we can go to our parameters and just tweak this on the fly, right? So I can make it four mil changes straight away. Uh, I can make it one mil. Let's try one. One's actually pretty nice. If we look at the original image, let's go and have a look. It's really hard to see. Um, it doesn't look too high though. I think I'm going to go for one. And it does look like there's a little fillet on there as well. So let's do that. 
let's add in a filler and the only annoying thing about this is we're gonna to have to go and click each line you can avoid that if you do a um, rather than do the circular pattern in the sketch like I did you can do a circular pattern with bodies instead so you can extrude one of them and then do a pattern of bodies but I like to do it in the sketch plane because I can make sure everything's lined up beforehand but it is up to you so I'm going to go to fill it now you can just select each of these doesn't take too long um, and then we can just apply a value to it uh, it's probably going to be a low value so I'm going to start with like 0.5 you can see it just adds a nice little curve on there so I'm going to try 0.25 maybe I think 0.5 and again this could be a parameter as well um, so we're going to hit OK. I'm going to make it that a parameter as well. So I'm going to call this front lines fillet and I'll make it 0.5 and just update that value. And all, all it does is it makes your life easier later on when you want to make changes. And it really is the way to go if you're serious about designing. So there we go, that's that part. Now the only part we're missing is if we go to the image again is this part here so you can see if I zoom in oh dear let's go back I hate this Windows photo viewer right okay so you can see there's a cut out there but it doesn't cut all the way back right it only cuts a certain distance back so we're gonna add that in and again, we need to use that from surface technique again. So if we go to our sketch, show it again, we want to extrude or cut these parts, which are those parts we sketched out. And what should happen, right? what a lot of people would do is they just go, yeah, I want to cut. So they go and drag this back, change it to cut, but they'll go and drag back and it'll do this. So you can see what's happening here. Is it's just making a straight cut all the way back and that that looks nasty we don't want to do that you can see it's not cutting at a curve so what we want to do is go to start from object select this and then we can enter a value and so I'm gonna go for like minus one millimeter you can see it's cut back there but it's following that curve and it looks much, much better. So I'm going to go for two. Again, this can be a parameter as well. So uh, I'm going to hit OK. I'm not going to make it a parameter for now because I'm happy with that, two mil. But if we zoom out, you can see now that's starting to look really, really good, right? And it looks awesome. So I don't know if I can see any more fillets really on there. Uh, there's probably a small. Let's go to here. I think we'll leave it for now. We can fill it in later. So I'm going to cancel that. And there we go. That is the majority of our alloy modeled. If I go to the front view, show the canvas again, you can see that it lines up almost pretty much perfectly and that's what we want. So if I show and hide, there we go. So next up, we're going to design the tires and the tread on the tires as well. And this is going to be the, the most difficult part because we don't have, we don't really have the measurements that we need to do this. All we have is these images. But as I said before, you can see that the tire sticks out further than the rim. And that's kind of all we need to know for now. And, you know, as long as the, the overall diameter and width of the wheel is correct, the, the other stuff isn't too important really um, for, for my use specifically. So, to create the tire, it's actually not going to be a new sketch. We're going to go back to our wheel profile sketch. So, I'm going to go back here. And this is where we first started, right? But what we can do is just use this and extend it upwards using uh, some curves or some splines. So, I'm just going to sketch out something rough for now fit point spline and I want to just drag it up somewhere somewhere around here like this so we got a nice kind of curve going on something like that 
I'm going to add in a construction line. I've already got one actually, so I could probably just extend that one. So let's do that. Let's extend that up. There we go. And we need to start thinking now about the height of the tires. So we know that the overall diameter of the wheel is one, two, five mil. And we know that this value here is the radius plus that alloy thickness that we created. So we can use this variable again. So now we're going to add in our dimension. I'm going to hit D on the keyboard. And I'm going to go from this point here to this point here. If we can select it. There we go. I remember, we want this to be. Um, we want it to be the wheel diameter minus um, this value here. A wheel diameter divided by two because we want the radius, right? Divide that by two. Get it in brackets as well. Brackets are always useful, cleans it up. Um, now we want to subtract this value. Get that in brackets as well. And uh, we want to also subtract that variable that I created, tire tread height. And there we go, you can see that's worked it out for us. And what will happen if I change if I change my um, tire tread height now, just so to say for an extreme example, I add a 15 mil tire tread height. Here adjust it for us. So you're adjusting the tire thickness, but keep in the, the tire tread height. And again, this is that essential parametric modern stuff it's awesome once you understand how to use it you'll never look back really so we can use this to adjust that curve if we want to so i'm just going to keep it round about there for now um and obviously we want a nice kind of arc as well here for the tire so i'm going to create an arc because you can see if we look at the image again, if you do a straight line, you end up with a really flat looking tire, like more like a car tire. You can see these curve over. They kind of curve over a bit. So we might use that. Um, let's go to create arc, three point arc. And I just want to create one between these two points. Drag that up. We just want it to be, yeah. Oh, actually, we want it to be centered as well, right? So, uh, what we want is let's draw another construction line. I'm going to use this. Is that even straight? Yeah, it's straight. So, we've got another construction line. And we want to mirror this. So let's mirror the, the two points. Let's create a mirror. Um, that's going to be the object. That's going to be the mirror line. And I should chuck it over there. And there we go. So now we want to arc between those two points. So we want to arc, three point arc, between there and there. And this is essentially going to be our tire curvature, if you like. And this can be a parameter too. So I'm going to make it uh, probably that. And we don't want it to be a construction line. We want it to be um, a normal parameter. So remember, one other thing we have to factor in is the width. So we know that the width of the whole thing was 65. So we know the width of this here is 55. So we've got five mil to play with either side. So we want to set the distance between this point and this point. And it is currently set to five. So that's good. Um, we're going to put that in and make it five for now. But I'm going to add a parameter called uh, tire width. What can we call it? Um, tire width adjustment. I'm just going to call it that. I'm going to hit 5 mil. Okay. 
So we're gonna make that tire width adjustment and see if it breaks it. So you can see it's happy with that. What it's not happy with is the height because we haven't given it a height. Oh, we have given it a height actually. Um, what is it complaining about? I know, it's the radius of this. Um, but if we fix that, it may cause issues with... Okay. I think that'll do it for now. I can't see a way to add a parameter for these without it breaking my parametric modeling. Because if I change the height, um, then in theory, the radius of that will change. So I'm, I'm happy with that. Uh, let's see if it breaks if I change that value. It might do. Let's change this to uh, 8. And there we go. You can see that worked. You can see it adjusted it for us. So I can change the width of the tire based on these. Um, if you do something extreme, it probably will break. No, no, maybe not. So I want to keep it to 5 for now. I'm happy with that. Hit OK. And I'm going to finish that sketch. Um, what we can do now is show the sketch. Um, not that sketch, the sketch. And we can revolve again. So let's go to revolve. We select that part that we want. I'm also going to select that part as well, just because I, I feel like it's useful. Um, select the axis. I'm going to make it Z. And there we go. You can see it's done that. Now this looks weird for now, but we'll correct it later on, so don't worry about it. Um, that's exactly what we want to do. And we want a new body because we're creating a new, new piece of the model. Hit OK. So there we go. And you can see again, we can use that value here. I can make that um, 10. You can see it adjusts it. And it looks really weird now, right? So you can see that. We want to keep five. And it can take a while to do those calculations um, just because there's a lot of geometry involved. So I'm happy with that. I'm going to rename it to um, tire. I'm going to call it tire. And now we can use our image again to try and um, calibrate this. So you can see it's a little bit sticking out too much. So um, either I made an error somewhere in our calculations or it's just due to the perspective of the image. And it looks like here we've made a mistake somewhere because you can clearly see if we show the, if you look at the canvas, our actual tire is sticking out further than the tread and that shouldn't be the case. So let's go back and have a look. Let's go to our wheel profile. I think I know what the mistake is already. So what's happened here is um, I've set the height to be to this point. Yeah, remember we're arching the tire. So the height, the maximum height point is actually here. So what I'm going to do is add a line. I'm just going to add a line in here. I'm going to trim away this part. Add that there. And now instead of instead of do this equation between those two points, so I'm going to um, copy that. Hit enter. We want to do it between these points. So I'm going to change this for now to be default to 20.5. This will adjust when we make this correct correction. So we want this and this to be that equation because that's the high point of the tire, right? So we're going to do that, enter it, <clears throat> and you can see what's happened there. So now we need to adjust this value. So if we make it 10, I should bring it down. But obviously we want it to be more than 10. So maybe try 15. That starts to look a bit better. 
So what I'm going to do is make that a parameter. Um, and we're going to go to profile. Did I already create one for that? No. Tire profile height. So let's make that. We want it to be 15 mil. Okay. Just enter this one. Tire profile height. And there we go. And remember, we need to mirror that. So if we go and create mirror this line with this line. Okay. And that doesn't look like a smooth curve. So may have to change that. I don't know. Let's have a look. Let's see what the extrusion looks like. You'll spot it instantly if it's not. Um, yeah, it seems to be seems to be correct. And that's okay. So now, now if we go back to our front view, you can see that that's, that's fixed it. So if we hide the canvas, you can see that's there. Let's show the canvas. Zoom in. You can see it's more or less correct, right? It's, it's the right um, the right radius. So that's good. That's exactly what we want. So we're going to hide the canvas now. And now what we're going to do is go and model the tire tread. So let's go do that. So the tire tread is actually going to be a little bit tricky because I've only got this image as a reference, which isn't great. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create an offset plane again. So I'm going to go to construct offset plane. I want it to be here on in, out in front of the tire. I'm going to hit OK. I'm just going to create a sketch on here. And basically from here, we just want to copy this pattern. Um, it would have been nice to have the image as a reference, but I can kind of do it. So I'm going to put it over here on my other screen and just kind of eyeball it. So um, it also depends on the direction of the tread, which way we want it to be. Um, so I think we'll stick with that. So we're not quite in the center, so we want to start uh, a spline. And again, this is going to be one of those things that's hard to ha add in parameters for. Um, so you just have to eyeball it. So I'm going to go probably between here and here. Just curve it up, curve it around, something like that. I'm going to hit the tick for now. And remember, you only need to do it on the one side because we can use of course, um, the mirror. We can use the mirror tool. So I want to add it around there. And these kind of narrow towards the edge. So I want to do a similar kind of thing. Kind of like, kind of like this. But then we've got another spline part. So let's use that. Kind of, kind of, eh, okay, let's control Z, oh no, spline, spline, I want to, I want to curve this around, like that, and then, and then we come up and around like this. That's cool. So we're going to do that. And we just want another line. Goes to around there. Create spline. And I'm going to add this one. So just want a nice little curve. It comes out. It comes out further than those. Quite a lot further, actually. Um, probably to around there. Again, that's another curve. That one comes in. 
comes to a narrow point in line with that. Then we use another line to join those up something like this. So they join and of course we can add in a filler as well, which is also on the actual model. Um, they fill it down to a point. Something like that. Okay. Probably gonna need some edits, it's not gonna be perfect. But you have to start somewhere, right? So I'm gonna probably make it a bit narrower. Like that. Probably bring this one in a bit more of a curve. Something like that. And of course, if we look at the image, um, if I move this over for you, if we look at the image, you can see there's another line round about there. So let's add that one in as well. That kind of just follows suit. Um, Roughly, roughly from around here. It's just a straight line down to the edge. Similar to this. We got that one. This one seems to get wider towards the outside, which is a little different. So we're going to do something like that. I don't know if that looks right. Yeah, okay. Okay. We're going to do that. For now. don't know what that's about. Um, okay, so we want to join those up. Like that. These also need to fill it. So we can add that in. Fill it down to a rounded edge. And this just appears to be a straight line, to be honest with you. So um, we could use that and make them coincident like this. Okay, so I want to add in some dimensions first because there's something we need to change. I'm going to add a parameter called tread uh, edge offset because this may be an issue. So I'm going to make it three mil for now. So we need an offset between uh, this point and this point. I'm going to make it tread offset. So there we go. Same goes for this point. Oh, we've already, yeah, of course. So uh, we want, again, the same thing for these points. Now this might be a little trickier because of the way I've done it. Um, let's make it tread offset. I can see it's not happy with that. So, um, I think what we can do is just remove these for now, add in uh, that dimension first. So we want that and that to be tread offset. Same for this, tread offset. And that just stops it. It means we can adjust it later on if we have to. So uh, I want I want to join those lines up like this, and we might see if we can get away with a fillet here without it sort of looking ugly. Yeah, okay, that'll do. I think that works. Let's hit enter. Okay, so let's, let's have a look at that. Okay. <clears throat> so, 
again what I'm going to do here is add a construction line straight down the middle uh, we're going to make sure it is in the center by using a dimension so we can add between the edge and that and make it um, tire width divided by two there we go it's nice and centered so we can create a mirror again we want to select all of these except the edge and mirror line is going to be this hit ok you can see now that's duplicated that for us onto there so the way that we actually get this onto the tire itself is a little bit hacky so I'm going to finish the sketch what we have to do is um, use a split body tool to project, essentially project this to the curved surface. So I'm going to hit extrude and I want to select all of these profiles. And what we're going to do is just extrude backwards into, into the sketch, into the, um, the body. Make sure you extrude enough that it goes inside of it like that. We're going to hit OK. Now, that doesn't look right. I know it looks horrible, but what we've got to do is come up to modify split body. I'm going to select our body to split, and then our splitting tools are going to be these four new bodies. We're just going to hit OK. What that does is if we hide the originals here, it leaves you with these bodies here which follow the curve of the tire. So you can see what we're left with basically are these additional bodies. So if I hide um, these and this one, oh sorry, this one, you can see that we've got these cutouts. But if I hide this one and show the others uh, and then hide the actual tire, you can see we've got these separate bodies here. So all we wanna do in this case Let's hide the original ones and we can just use the press pull tool to add a tread so we're just going to go to press pull i'm going to select all of these and notice as we pull it's also following the curve of the tire you can see there that's what we want so i'm going to make this my parameter which was tire tread height and just hit ok and now we can always adjust this later on but first, what we want to try and do is get our tire radius fixed. So if I go to um, canvas, show the canvas, come to the front view, we just want to make sure our height is correct. You can see it's probably a little high there actually. So let's change it. Let's go back here and make it tire tread height. Let's try 2.5. See how that looks. It can take a little while. Okay, that seems to do it. That seems to be a bit better. Might increase it later on. We'll see how it goes. So we're going to hide that. And what we can do is add in our radius. So we need to fill up these edges. And actually, that's going to be a problem. So what we're going to have to do is go back to uh, tire tread. So I'm going to rename this sketch to tire tread. Come back in here. Just realize that we can't have, we cannot have these being a fill-up because we need to apply a radius on the outside. So we need to ditch these. And let's just get rid of the fill-up. Uh, we'll probably delete it on the timeline, it's easier. Um, so let's just trim it away. Trim, trim. And we just extend these lines back down to these points. So let's get rid of this and this. Get rid of those as well. Again, just like before, we want it to be um, tread edge offset. Same for this one. 
trade edge offset and just join them up with the line basically so we can do that and now that should fix our issue and if we go to mirror select all these objects except the outside line use the construction line okay we're gonna have to do this again so we're gonna extrude these backwards just like before all the way back into the body but we're gonna create a new body uh, hit OK then we're going to do a split body and we want to split this with these four. Oh, my bad let's kind of start again we want to split this with these four like that okay if we hide the original ones you can see that we're left with those and again we just want to press pull select those faces and set it up to be tire tread height and there we go so once again we go to fill it and this time we can actually perform our radius here our fill it come to the other side same thing and now we should be able to play around with this a bit and it'll get to a point where it'll break so around about there you can see it starts to not be happy because it doesn't go back far enough for it to complete the fillet so to fix that what we can do is come back to our original extrusion here and bring it back further I hit OK and now if we come back to the fillet again we should be able to uh, increase this a little bit so if I make it 6 you can see that doesn't quite break it let's try 10 maybe it starts to fall over a little bit so I'm going to go for 6 for now but remember what we can do to fix it which is why I added that parameter earlier on is use um, our edge offset so if we make this less if we make it less if we make it um, 2 mil oh, it's not going to like that we want to make it 2 mil that'll update for us and you can see it's gone closer to the edge on both sides so that might give us more wiggle room with this radius and there may be a better way to do this I'm not sure so let me know if you know a better way but for now I'm quite happy with this way um, I can see there the radius is not it's not playing ball very well so again we can go up here change this so we can make it one that'll make it move further out you can see it's still having that issue there where it's clipping it so let's make it back down to six where it's comfortable completing that radius let's try maybe five there we go that that seems to be the right kind of radius for it so you can see what we've got now is something that looks pretty similar if we get our image back here and this one you can see it's kind of it's kind of starting to look similar right a little bit of work to be done but it's getting there we can just adjust this and all those changes will propagate through so obviously adjust the side that the mirrors apply to this one for example um, we probably want to add an extra point between these two just to stop this horrible um, denting here so if I go to spline fit point spline I could probably add a point in um, maybe delete you could probably delete this part of the line right there and add in a new one so let's go to spline fit point spline basically I just want to make it smoother while also making it larger so let's try let's try something like that 
I'm going to apply that again join those up you can see um, we need to redo the mirror again so uh, I'm going to delete these and just just literally do the same thing so we're going to create mirror select these parts the mirror line is going to be this select these parts add our mirror line to be that and there we go so we've got a bit of a thicker pattern and we'll just see how it looks I'm going to finish so let's go to our sketch select these going to go backwards uh, just make that a new body okay exact same thing split the bodies I want to split this one and uh, the splitting tools are going to be these here so we've got this one this one this one and this one okay so we can hide those and we just want to press pull Bring that out by tire tread height. I can already see this is going to look much better. So I'm going to save. And now we go for the circular pattern again. I'm going to select the objects. This one, this one, this one, and this one. We want this axis. And again, we want to add 20. Hit OK. There we go, that's starting to look a lot nicer. But one thing, we actually forgot to do something again, which is a bit annoying. Let's go back. We forgot to add our fillet. So, let's fill these. Remember we added a 5mm fillet before. So we want both edges. And we want it to be 5mm. Hit OK. And notice here we've got a little mistake. So let's adjust that. I want to bring it back. There we go. Let's hit OK. Let's fix that for us. Uh, so we've got that little fillet on the edge, which gives the tire a bit of a curve. We've also kept that rounding on the top. And I'm just going to go for, uh, again, circular pattern. You can see how quick it is to do something quite complex, which is, is really nice. So uh, we just want to add 20 of them. Hit OK. And there we go. We've essentially got a treaded tire now. And it's not exactly the same. I'm going to have to go back and make changes like these little parts. But to be honest, I could probably do that here. As long as I don't delete the mirror. So if I go to tire tread and um, you can see these parts have a bit of an error in them if I adjust them just um, make them a bit smoother that should change it over here and it did so I could probably go a little bit wider as well to be fair There we go, that's better. So I'm going to finish that. You can see that change has been made there now. And yeah, that's turned out all right, to be fair. So let's just actually try and add a bit of width again, maybe even more. See what we can get away with. Let's throw these in. Starting to look somewhat, yeah, that seems about right to me. So I'm going to finish. Oh yeah, that's a lot better. Okay, so if I show you this one, so we've got, that's my one. This is the original. Um, kind of the same, um, not perfect, but it'll do because, you know, I'm only using it to help design my car as long as I can attach it to the couplers and be able to steer it and all that stuff.
that's fine. So as long as the height and the width and everything's correct. One other thing I want to do is add a bit of a lip there between the tire and the alloy itself. Because uh, it seems to be one on here. You can see it there, just, just a slight little lip. So we can do that easily. If we go back to our alloy pattern, um, I just have to match this up. So if I match this radius, so we should be, I believe 75, um, 78, no, that's right. That one's 78, but that should be um, alloy diameter plus alloy thickness. Divided by alloy thickness times two, because there's two of them. Uh, and then we had this one, which is gonna be our thickness. So we're gonna go for alloy diameter plus some value. So let's try five. Okay, five's okay. So I'm gonna make a new parameter for that. Um, I'm just gonna call this alloy um, offset. No, we've already got that. I'm gonna call it lip. I'm just gonna call it lip. So I'm gonna make that five. Okay, okay. And now adjust this to that parameter. There we go. So if I finish that sketch, doing the calculations again um, and now if I show the sketch I can select an extrusion for that point and again we start from the object here and I can set this to be another parameter so let's try uh, make it 3 mil. so we've got so much geometry now it's kind of slowing down a little bit but I'm gonna go for 1 mil. I think that'll do it, or two maybe. I think one will do it. You can't see me changing that, so I'm not gonna create a parameter for it. But you can see what it's done, so if I, you see it's just added that little, just a nice little touch really on the wheel, makes it look a bit more, a bit more realistic. So I'm gonna add a fillet between these two, just to try and smooth it off. And there we go, you can see that really helps. It just looks a lot cleaner. Okay, so that's that. And I could also probably add a fillet to this one uh, if I really wanted to, just to clean that up as well. There we go, so hit OK on that. So you can see now this is starting to look really, really good, to be fair. Um, I'm going to add in some uh, appearance stuff now so we can change the colors and, and whatnot. All right, so I've made a few little changes in here, and this is the finished result for now. Um, so if I put this one to the side here, I've added some appearance stuff as well, which you can see. But if I bring up the original in this image, and I kind of size them up the same, I get the same kind of perspective, which is a little difficult, but... You can see they're pretty much the same. They're very similar. Um, as I said, they're never going to be perfect from using an image. It is very difficult to do. Uh, when the actual tires arrive, I'll make a couple of changes in here. But for the most part, this is following the right dimensions. You know, the the radius or the diameter of the whole wheel is correct. Uh, the width of the tires as well is correct. And the only other thing I need to add really is this part here where the coupler connects to. And if I show you the back of this one, you can see there I've just left that um, as a surface. And all I'd have to do is just sketch on that and sketch on the right dimensions. But I'm going to leave that till the part arrives. And yeah, I'm really pleased with that. So I'm going to have a go at kind of rendering some stuff, uh, maybe do some animation just to show you guys something. And yeah, I'll be posting a kind of speed edit to this on my Instagram. So make sure you follow me on there. Hopefully you found this video kind of useful. 
and maybe you learn something from it. As I said, it's always difficult to design something like this without real measurements and from images. But I think it turned out pretty well and I'm really happy with this. I'm going to use this in my RC car project for version 2. So stay tuned for that CAD design stuff. If you want to see more like this, leave a comment below. And, you know, if you want to support the, the channel, please consider becoming a Patreon. Um, you'll be supporting me directly and it allows me to keep making videos like this. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed and I'll see you on the next video.